Hello and welcome to South of King's Landing, the Explosion Network's Game of Thrones after show. I'm Dylan Blight and joining me, Ashley Hobley. Hey Dylan, excited to be here talking about the Thrones games. The Thrones games, that's exactly the show it is about. Or did you know you're fucking your relative? <laughs> that's probably the better tagline, I think, actually, yeah. Um, yeah, so of course this is our after show for uh, Game of Thrones. You watch this after you've watched the show. We talk about... And Preferably. Break- yeah, well, I mean, it's probably not going to make much sense if you don't, to be perfectly fucking honest with you. So, yeah, watch it after you've watched the episodes. Uh, we're going to go through and kind of break down and give our <coughs> thoughts about some of the bigger, more key moments throughout the show, of course. So, that's what it's about. Uh, briefly, this week's episode was the first of season six, of course. Uh, season eight, sorry. The premiere episode, it was titled Winterfells, directed by David Nutter, written by Dave Hill. Uh, this week in the premiere, we base we got to see a lot of Winterfell, because it's the title, of course. We see Daenerys and Jon arrive back at Winterfell to say somewhat cold reception as Sansa questions why Jon gave up his title to her uh, as King of the North and bent the knee, basically. And the Northerners struggle to accept Jon throwing away his cr- figurative crown as well. Uh, then we get to see a lot of characters come back to one another face to face for the first time uh, since for a lot of them season one i I guess for some of them some of them quite a few seasons as well so that was good there's a lot of fan servicey type stuff in in that aspect although not really forcibly stuff i suppose um and then of course big moment later in episode where we get to find uh see john finally learn his true family lineage uh which is delivered to him via sam who also learns about what's happened to his family um, and then in, no. the north, in the north, this episode, we don't get much there, but uh, Cersei seems to be naively giggling about the fact that uh, the undead are suddenly breaking through the wall, and she's just, as usual, being really dumb and thinking that she's going to be able to get away with everything. Um, and then Euron's, Euron's just obsessed with fucking He's him. thinking with one part of his body. Thinking with definitely one part of his body, that's for sure. Uh, so before we jump into certain... Uh, breaking down certain uh, story beats and those, those sorts of things. What did your, what are your overall thoughts for the, the premiere episode of the final season, Ash? I mean, it was a solid episode. Uh, it was kind of what I think a lot of people have come to expect from a season pre of Game of Thrones, sort of setups the season um, with different storylines. It was sort of checking in with everybody, seeing where everybody's at. Obviously, it was a bit more interesting because everybody's kind of together for a change. Mm-hmm. Uh, Danny's not off on the other side of the world. Um, they're all kind of grouped up in two places so um yeah it was i, I enjoyed it i enjoyed the the moments of john seeing aria and and uh bran and bran just not caring about anything that what, was fun what is bran <laughs> what is bran <laughs> what is bran really and what his is deal i don't it's just all the memes I've seen online of the the best one I saw was someone posted a, a video of a dog, like from the outside of a house, and it was like this is brand this entire episode of Game of Thrones. And they're like at one window, and the dog's just like sitting there, and then they start walking around the outside. By the time they get to the next window, the dog's just sitting there staring already. Go to the next window, <laughs> dogs moved, it's staring. Go around to the other side of the house, dogs ran all the way over there, ready there staring for this tiny gap of the window or something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, that that was probably the. Most evident thing, I think. It's very amusing. <laughs> very amusing. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people online say that they were somewhat underwhelmed with this episode. What do you, what do you, what do you reckon about that? Did you find it at, at all underwhelming? Well, when you've it? got six episodes, mm-hmm. I guess you're expecting big things to happen quickly. So, well, yeah, but how quickly is my question? Like, yeah, I, I think you just need to go in with real ex- realistic expectations and you'd be like, yeah, that's pretty solid. I don't think it's like world changing or mind blowing or anything. So, mm-hmm. but. There are moments that I liked and enjoyed mm-hmm. finally getting to see. And uh, it's it's clearly setting up this last run. Mm-hmm. So you can't fault it too much for that. Episodes a lot Especially given we we haven't seen an episode in two freaking years. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, remember this thing? Remember this? Remember this? Set up, set up. Remember this? Set up, set up, set up. I, it was pretty much what I expected the, the first episode, to be honest. Honestly, and although I want to discuss uh, 
a little bit later, kind of what we think is going to happen next episode, obviously. I kind of expect the separate second episode to be somewhat similar. And I've kind of thought this from the moment we knew the run times because it was like episode one, two, 50 something minutes, and then episode three, four, five, six are like increasing in runtime, these sorts of things. I'm like, okay, so the first two episodes are set up type, just more those sorts of things um but i thought it was a good premiere i mean it's, uh, as i said before it's a lot of fan servicey type stuff but not like bad fan servicey type stuff i guess unless you want to count the dragon thing which it was we'll all natural too but um it all just seemed like hey just enjoy these characters kind of coming back like talking to one another for a while before things start getting too crazy. before they all die yeah before they all start dying off one another uh k- killing off one another and these sorts of things so that's fine i, I definitely not you're not going to look back on the season. I hardly doubt I'm going to look back at the season and be like, yeah, this is one of the strongest episodes. But um, it's just, it just seems like a necessary episode, but I don't think that makes it great or bad either way. It's just like, it's fine. Give, looking forward to next week, I guess. Like, <laughs> yeah. It f- f- falls on no, f- either side of, of good or bad to me. Uh, all right. So let's dive into some of the stuff that happened in, uh, can, I, can I kick off something that you, yeah. we haven't put in the notes? Okay, yeah. I really like the new opening credits. They've done... Obviously, they're not spanning all over the world anymore. Mm-hmm. It, so they've sort of focused in on uh, Winterfell and King's Landing. So instead of like just really large shots from the outside, they've actually gone into, into yeah. the buildings, which they haven't done in the previous seasons. Sort of look in the crypts and underneath Stark Cavern. And then at the end of the credits, it's an actual shot of the Iron Throne, which is, I thought was pretty cool. I liked it. I was, but I guess I wasn't as impressed as you because I was just like, you weren't. They, they changed the credits. Attention. They, You're they, like, they, I got to get my notes. Well, you get my pad. To be a hundred, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I wasn't really paying too much credit. I, I, I think I looked up. I saw them going through the crypt. I was like, oh yeah, cool. And then I, I, I was getting. I yeah. was. You're just too busy going. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> We've sat through it enough times. I, I, <laughs> the credits start. The there are clues. Playing, there are clues. I, yeah, I did see some people on Reddit being like, yeah. they've got a symbol in the fucking thing now and all these sorts yeah, of Yeah, they stuff. changed the, you know, the little, the the world thing that spins around. They've got like the mm. bands. They've changed this, the imagery on that. Yeah, I saw. One of them's the Red Wedding. Yeah. Yeah. They've got little s- secrets in there. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Out of habit, I sit down, I put it on. I don't, I would never fast forward through it because I like listening to the music, but I do think that I'm now just like, <laughs> I don't, I, I, I seriously wasn't paying any too much attention to the, the actual opening thing I, they, they change it every season somewhat i'm used to them they changing do. it but it's never they pretty much change it every episode depending on sometimes the episode. what's happening yeah depends on what's happening in it most episode. times yeah so we'll see next week i presume it'll be also really they had like the though. obviously they had the shattered wall that, that, that was the start that was cool of the trailer oh, that's cool that's cool seeing the wall so, shattered. yeah remember this remember the wall was shattered <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool. how'd you forget that um, all right. So as, as the, the title suggests, of course, this episode revolves a, ro- uh, a lot around, uh, Winterfell, cause that is the title of the episode. Um, also I saw someone point out it's a tie into the first episode, which was called winter is coming. Yes. There was another episode called something Winterfell, like the one where they, they fired it off, uh, versus John versus girlfriend or whatever. I'm pretty sure that's called something of Winterfell, like the battle for Winterfell, something or other winterfell something i swear that was called something winterfell as well you know the one I'll where he kills us spoilers we're in season eight <laughs> <laughs> the one you know, where they kill where he kills great. his 2b wife you know that one that's the thing that yes yeah. yeah i'm pretty sure that was called something or other of winterfell as well but um this episode opens with daenerys and john and their army arriving at uh winterfell of course after we last saw them get on their boats and have the old sexy times at the end of the last episode after the the wall came uh, and they left behind the dragon. Dragon died. Wall came crashing down. They didn't know about that. They're they're on the run. They're, they're in boats now. We can get we get a little bit. We don't know how long's passed. I guess it's been. It would have been months, obviously, realistically. But then last season they introduced all this. Time doesn't really matter because characters just d- disappear and left, right, and center all over the place. So I don't really try not to think about the the time aspect of the characters in this show t- too much these days because they're just fast travel. They're video game characters fast traveling all around the place. Um, pew, pew, pew. Yeah, we get to see Arya. She's like in the crowd, uh, the crowd down with the, the townspeople, which I find funny because it's like Arya's just, she's like, I'm just one of the people. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna chill Also out. kind of a callback to the first episode. Chill the first episode. Was she watching um, Jamie and all that come in? 
on yeah. the, the town, yeah. Not from like a tree, but like on top of a cart or Similar, something. Similar. Um, I think I saw pointed out. Yeah. Um, so she's watching everyone come in and she once day she looks really happy with like she sees John and she like wants to like call out, but then she chooses not to. But it's, it's She like, looked kind of upset that he didn't notice her. Didn't notice her, yeah. But he's like, mm. I don't know, to, to me, I took it as like, A, I was like, oh, Arya's just like the audience for this whole, whole episode, getting to watch all these characters just interact with one another and be like, oh, look, here they come. I'm just going to watch your old giddy. But then also it was this thing for, as her character where she kind of broke for a second and wanted to yell out like, hey, John, my family, like, oh, I love it. But we're so used to like Arya now just being like this more like stern and serious Stoic. Sto- yeah, yeah, yeah. So t- for a second there, she kind of broke and like smiled and wanted to be like, hey, John, remember me? It's this. Uh, <laughs> you ever talk to me? <laughs> um, but yeah. I'm older now. Yeah, do you, do you recognize me? I'm big. I- I've killed some people. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> I wear people's faces now. <laughs> what I see, <laughs> I wear yours. It's <laughs> a bit weird, but. Um, so. First thing we see when they all, they all arrive into the actual town is uh, we get to see John reunite with Bran finally. Um, they haven't seen each other since the first season, right? Yep, and Bran was super emotional. Yeah, he's like, hello, John. It's nice to see you again. And John's like, hey, bro, how you going, man? Give you a hug. <laughs> yeah, he just and gives Bran's just look. like, awesome. have you heard I'm the one-eyed raven? Like, <laughs> hey. have, have you heard? I have, I have powers now. Yeah, Bran, this entire episode's really fucking creepy, of course. But at this stage, honestly, I'm just used to Bran being ca- creepy. I feel yeah, like. it's a fun kind of creepy now. It's it's <laughs> it's something, is what it is. Um, <laughs> then he, of course, he talks to Sansa, and Sansa introduces... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. John introduces Sansa to Daenerys, and they, straight away, not exactly off to the... No. Don't like each other. Not exactly off to the best start at all, are they? they? You can tell, like, at one stage there, Santa, like, literally just looks up and down with her eyes and was like, no, don't like you at all. Like, <laughs> you just, <laughs> she's pretty much harsh. Not onto it. Super harsh, really. Mm. I don't, she doesn't seem to have much justification not well, to like her other than, I don't know. So, I guess it, it's probably going to be explored further on, but. It just, she doesn't, it's, northerners they don't trust anyone it's like their thing um that's true they go in and they have a, a meeting of course after this and everyone's a upset about upset with john because he's bent the knee to daenerys um and gave and thus gave up his king of the north title that they all gave him so people made are m- well yeah but it's a made but it wasn't all, official <laughs> all titles are made up until they're official you know what i'm saying okay Let, let's be real yeah uh, so they're all pissed off about that, including, um, what's that girl's character? Uh, the younger, I can't know, fucking, oh, I should remember her name. Sorry, but she's, she's still here. Leanna Mormont. Thank you. Leanna Mormont. She's, uh, she's the one yelling and screaming about it at one stage there. Hasn't um, aged a day. It's no, crazy. Not at all. <laughs> You'd think she would have cause she's, um, no. a, a little kid and usually they age the fastest in these shows and you can tell the fastest. Yeah. The but, fastest, no. but no, they must've shot this like real quick. They're like, the, we need to get. <laughs> yeah. Her Which, stuff done quick. Yeah, <laughs> hurry up! She's a gro- <laughs> she's a growing little girl. We need to or drugs. Oh, you went hard. <laughs> anti aging. <laughs> you took it in a completely different direction. But... Anti aging. Mm, that's probably not no. Uh, so they begin talking about that sort of stuff, and John's like, you know, I I I'm more interested in protecting the North than I am li- having a title. And then, rightfully so, he's like, and guess what? The fucking titles don't matter when we're all going to fucking die if we don't all get along. Yeah. Like a lot of the this only show, rational person. Yeah, a lot of the show the last couple of seasons has John just been like, I'm sick and tired of the politics, the titles. Just, yeah. We're all going to die to the zombies if you people don't all we don't work together to, to, yeah. to get along. Um, the only thing Sansa says that does make sense and is like a, a rightful kind of thing to bring up. She's like, you know, I don't know how I'm. She's like, I guess, you know, cool. This is great and all, but I don't know how I'm supposed to feed an army of Unsullied, an army of Dothraki, plus whatever the rest of your army, along plus with all the people I've got. Two dragons. Plus two dragons. Like, and then that, she has a funny little comment, what do dragons even eat? And then you can tell um, Daenerys is a little bit 
annoyed with that comment. It's like, whatever they want. It's like, oh, just, just, just <laughs> that was down. unnecessary. Just cal- calm down, Daenerys. You, you, you're in a house, and she's like, I'm queen though. She's um, got a point. She does have a valid point. point. It is a valid point. I think like there is a lot of people to feed, and the you know winter is here. Hashtag, and there's a fight coming and these sorts of things. So it's it's a very valid point. I feel. But yeah, how how, how do you feel about the way? Because obviously it continues for the rest of the episode. Sansa's not feeling. Uh, up to it and then later in the episode she questions john and asks him pretty much uh well no, not pretty much she just straight up says straight did, you bend the, <laughs> did you bend the knee because for to like protect us or is it because you love her so do you feel like sansa's being too overprotective or like the right level for like she's running you know she's running I'm, it now so i mean given her backstory and history i mean it makes sense that she's a bit wary of powerful women mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah she so she doesn't trust queens yeah. uh, she just looks too much like marjorie and cersei back in the day does mm. she though blonde <laughs> just blonde. doesn't like blondes all blonde people look the same <laughs> yeah um I, yeah I, I i think we'll probably explore it the next couple of episodes there'll be tension just i think it's just women's intuition that's what it is more than anything else <laughs> is that what you're boiling it down to women's intuition yep. That's what that's that's, <laughs> that's what it must be. Yeah, fair enough. I I, I don't know. I feel like I, I I feel like there's a there's a select group of audience members who for some reason like hate Sansa at this stage. But I'm like, man, she went through, through some fucked up shit. You got to learn to give her some slack. I feel like. How can you hate her after she killed Littlefinger? Last year? Well, that's true. Also, she fucked the up the best shit. moment of the series, arguably. One of the best. most satisfying. Yeah, one of the best for sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. people. I saw some people reacting weirdly, and I'm like, well, she's just worried. She's just, you know, I can understand it. I, I, I mean, it's hard to be. Most people would not be worried about that kind of stuff when they're in the face of certain death, near certain death. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, from the undead. Yeah, from the undead. Yes. Uh, so we do get to see another uh, bunch of ca- catch ups and, and stuff in between the next like big moment. Uh, we see Sansa catch up with Tyrion. Finally, and they have a little funny quip about the, you know, Tyrion's like the last time I saw you, you like, you know, you you ran off and basically left me to deal with them and caused my life. You to made get- left me to carry the bag. <laughs> yeah, and I got fucked up in a lot of trouble for you leaving me there. And then Sansa says something along the lines of, "Yeah, but it wasn't all bad." Like hint, hint, because you know, Joffrey died that day. Yeah, he said so, oh, yeah, wedding oh, was oh, a bad oh, affair oh, or whatever. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, it's like it wasn't all that bad. Yeah. Um, and then she's like, you know, we're both still alive though, and. Uh, Tyrion points out that yeah, she's a lot of people uh, underestimated, underestimated her, her power and her smartness and these sorts of things. So yeah, it was, and they're all dead. Yeah, and they're all dead. So that was thing. Not not too much to it. It's just like, hey, he's there's a few of these scenes in this episode though. It's like, hey, hey remember these two were married? These two characters, <laughs> they had history. Now they're talking about it, and now they're not talking about it because the scene's over. There was a few of them, so that was one of them. Um, Arya and John catch up and discuss swords. This is probably my favorite of that all. That was the, nice. I like this. Yeah. Scene. This is my favorite of all the characters catching up and and talking on because it, it's cool. Like, a she sneaks up on him and he's like, "How the hell did you sneak up on me?" Because I'm Jon Snow and no one can fucking sneak up on. Sne- no one can sneak up on Jon Snow. I That's know impossible. stuff. Yeah, I I know everything. <laughs> Haven't you heard? Haven't you checked the internet? Um, <laughs> but and then they begin talking about swords and of course he gave her her uh, her. Uh, what's she called ne- the needle sorry uh, needle. that sword and then he's like oh you still got it and she's like yeah and then they basically he's like you want to see my sword and then she's like yeah it's cool it's too heavy no and- but he also boldface lies to him when he asks oh have you used it a couple of times yeah well she doesn't lie she's just like a couple of times what, what do you want her to be like yeah fucked up <laughs> more people than you <laughs> Jon Snow how let me killed? tell you my list yeah like, want to compare notes on how many people we've each killed I'll take you to town. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, I've killed this many White Walkers. And she's like, they don't count. Like, I, kill, I killed No, they're people. already dead. Yeah, they're already dead. They don't count for shit. Dead out. people don't count. Yeah, they don't, don't care. But yeah, I, overall, I thought this was the most uh, heartwarming yeah. uh, characters of all these like short little catch-up scenes. I thought I thought it was a good one. I was like, oh, when they, they, they turned around and they they hugged and embraced and was like, hey, you're catching up. I was like, yeah, I'm down for this. And they hugged again. Yeah, but Arya's like, also, so good you got it twice. Arya's also like my favorite character on the show, so I'm just like, yeah, yeah. go Arya. Um, then, but she's also wary of uh, Daenerys as well. So. Yeah, well they have yeah they have a short conversation 
where John's like, you should have helped me out with Sansa before. And then she, uh, Arya says that she's on Sansa's side because Sansa's just trying to protect the family. And then John does fun, like point out that it's funny that she's actually on her side because, you know, you think back to season one when we were introduced to the cast and it was like Sansa was just constantly picking on her as the younger sister. Yeah. And that sort of rivalry. Um, and now they're all, the two of them are getting getting along. They're it's best like, buds. They're grown up now, Jon Snow. All right. Where, where, where the fuck have yeah. you been? They're, these are... We've been through shit. We've been through shit. We've learnt to get along. You just sitting on your wall. Yeah. Fucking hell. Just uh. getting... Th- oh, I, like, I, like, had, I liked her asking how he survived getting stabbed in the heart. Yeah. And he's like, didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't question it past that, but yeah. Didn't, didn't, didn't hear it. Yeah. Didn't find out. Um, Arya, after this, uh, heads over and she catches up with the Hound, pretty much, for, for a hot second. Kind of. Kind of catches up, I guess, if you want to call it that. Uh, he calls her a cold little bitch, <laughs> which yeah. then proceeds, but then is like, and super endearing. That's probably why you survived, but also you left me to die. And she's like, yeah. I robbed you first. <laughs> I robbed you first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cold little bitch. It, she doesn't argue. She's like, yeah, I am, but guess what? Yeah. You're alive. I'm alive. Let's uh, move past Real it. Good. Okay. We're all on the same team now. Let's, let's move on. Uh, then she talks to Gendry about getting this new sword made. Uh, people, I, I looked up online, people are like pointing out that you can see this somewhat in some of the trailers. Like there's the one shot in the, the trailer where she's like running through the catacombs, it seems, and she's like bleeding somewhat and she's got it in the hand and there's another like two second shot of her like twi- twirling around in some sort of action scene where she's got it. Um, and judging by the design that's in the episode, it seems like it's, the theory is that it's a, um... Like a, a spear, double edged, that can be pulled apart into two, like sm- shorter things, is is what the th- the, the yeah. thing is. And there was okay. a there was an interview also like a month ago or something like that with the the person who does all the the weapon design stuff for the show, who said that there's a weapon coming up in season eight that's going to be a show stopper and everyone's going to love. So that's potentially the weapon that that person was talking about because obviously it's going to be really cool if it is this really well designed thing and then the other thing is like it could one side could be valerian steel and the other side could be like dragon glass i guess so she's kind of keeping like both sides yeah she's got a little bit of everything but it needs to be something that can kill white walkers so yeah so one for white war it's like a witch she's a witcher she's got a short sword and a long yeah. sword one for monsters one for humans i mean valerian and dragon glass both kill white walkers so i mean it doesn't really matter yeah but well yeah but yeah and if the dragon glass is sharp enough, you'll kill anybody. That's also true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably not necessarily. But yeah, I, 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 we'll see how far she gets away. Hope she, hope she just gets yeah. that weapon next week. It'll be cool. Yeah. Come on, Gendry. Gendry get to get work. the fucking work. Okay. Fucking rid of the hounds' weapons. Yeah. Make sure you're you- taking forever. Rowing a boat. <laughs> taking forever. Just, rowing just to make sure it'll work. <laughs> get, get to it, all right, Gendry. <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, yeah. So that was that was that was cool. Also. And they were clearly uh-huh. flirting. She was trying to flirt anyway. Yeah, she was a little bit. She's like, how many other rich girls? I'm the only rich girl that you do know. Ha. Huh? And then walks off. So, yeah. Yeah. Gendry and I are together at the end of the season. That was one of the questions we should have had in our predictions. <laughs> Didn't we both say Gendry's going to die? Doesn't mean they can't be together before he dies. You know? Like, they could be. All yeah. things are possible in love and war. I think. Maybe. We'll find out. Maybe? I don't, I don't know. All things are possible <laughs> or impossible, did you say? Oh, well, uh, moving on. Uh, so, in our first successful prediction for both of us, we get a big old green tick on something. In the first episode, yep. already getting de- green ticks for something, John rides a bloody dragon. So him and Danny go up to investigate the dragons uh, because Danny hears that they only ate 18 sheep and three cows. You know, some ridic- something that sounds like a lot to us, <sighs> they but didn't. to them is... Yeah. A very small number Barely of Barely anything. Um, and then they walk up and they, they see the bones there. They begin talking to him. Danny drops on top, jumps on top of one of the dragons. And then, yeah, John's... She's like, why don't you have a go? And he gets on and they have this rather feel-good five to ten... Somewhere between five to ten minute scene of them riding these dragons around in the sky. Yeah. It's, it's a cool... It looks great. Like, obviously, the CGI work that they do in the show... It's cool. The, the the funny scene they have later when they, they're kissing and they cut to that shot of the dragon, like kind of staring, like, staring that, which was supposed to be funny. It's a nothing scene, but at the same time, I don't mind it being in the first episode because it really does just feel like this 
hey, instead of having this moment be in as we were kind of theorizing, it would be like in the heat of the moment, he jumps on top of a dragon or whatever, um, yeah. gets on top of it. They've turned it into this kind of like sweet, yay, look, we're flying dragons. It's really like this cool thing instead of we're riding a dragon into battle. It's just more of the magical, fantastical element of fi- flying around yeah. on a dragon, I guess. And it's also because it's in the first episode, it's they get to do a sort of moment that's like, hey, here's a fun fan service type moment before shit starts getting too hectic. Real. Um, into the third part. before the revelation at the end of the episode well before that as well yeah so what 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 do you think was you fine with it or was you like this yeah is- it was fine i mean it was amusing watching him trying to get up on the dragon it was pretty funny i mean she was clearly enjoying him attempting yeah. um uh how to train your dragon did it better um <laughs> is that what it, uh, <laughs> i could i also was when he's climbing on i straight away was thinking about how to train your dragon as well actually yeah like you should put a saddle on this that would be a better idea haven't you watched How to Train Your Dragon? Come on, Jesus. Get your yeah. Together. Jeez. Um, and then the other thought was, uh, oh, yeah, it makes sense that he can dra- ride the dragon because he's part Targaryen. He's Targaryen, I you. Haven't been keeping up with the show. That's why they're cool with him. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we knew that last season, though, when he was able to touch them and everything. Yeah. I mean, it didn't get confirmed. He, does, he didn't season, know at the time. Yeah, that's true. Um... Yeah, it's a fine moment. I know it's the most mean moment I've seen on Twitter so far because of the the cut to the dragon and smiling at them yeah. or whatever it is. Like the watching. one eye looking at him. Yeah, that, that's the, like the most comedically cut moment I think in Game of Thrones. I swear. Yeah. Like the fact that they have a close up of him and then him like looking and then cutting to that dragon's face like that is you, like they're purposely doing it for comedic value, which this show doesn't really do ever. Do like when often. when the show's funny, it's usually just because characters just are witty. having like back forth quips at one another kind of thing but this show this season opened with a, a eunuch joke so that is true that's that the first line in the whole <laughs> fucking season the first yeah. piece of dialogue first piece of dialogue was Tyrion making eunuch joke that that is true yeah so there's the bar set everyone <laughs> and i guess <laughs> at that point but yeah it's, it's like whatever this this whole thing like watching these two i suppose the other thing about this scene is watching this was you like this is kind of boring because you feel like it's going to end when as soon as he finds out. Like, <laughs> it doesn't feel weird to watch their romanticizing. You know, you're like it's Game of Thrones, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I watch cousins fuck all the time. It's it's cool, All right? As long as they're not brother sister, whatever. Yeah, no problem. It's aunt and un- no aunt and nephew. <laughs> Keep getting it wrong. Whatever they are, they're related. Okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> um, okay, so leading to the whole f- the family moment, of course. Later in the later in the the episode, we do get to see uh, Danny goes to talk to Samuel Tarly, who is up in the library. Of course, that's where he hangs out, his favorite place. Um, and he she's basically being brought in by Jora, who um, is like, "Hey, come speak to this guy. He saved my life when I was getting rotting away with the." stone disease i forget the name of it sorry whatever that was called the, the stone disease he was running away with so like, hey this is the guy that saved me and she's like you know is there anything you can do uh is there anything i can do for you to help you and he's like you know actually if you don't mind your majesty your highness your lady whatever i call you please don't hurt me um can you give me a pardon and she asks what for and he says it's because uh, he stole his family's sword and some money, and that's when he like ran off. And then, of course, that's how he ended up at the Night Watch and all these sorts of things. We'd heard the we'd heard the story, of course, before, but what he doesn't know that we know is that she had his <gasps> fucking family bet lie murdered. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like not just murdered, really. They were the, the synagogue uh, killed. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were killed. They were dusted. They were dusted. They were game. Not with the snap. No, not with the snap though. Yeah. Um. So she begins explaining this. He's. She's like, oh, not re- related to whatever his name is, uh, Tali. And he's like, yeah, that's my dad. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. He uh failed to bend the knee. Blah 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 blah. And this stage, he starts getting a bit upset. And then it's oh, you know, at least grayscale. That's the sorry grayscale. That's, that's, that's the disease. That's the disease. Um. And then. It's like, oh, you know, at least my brother's ruling that place now. I'll be okay. And then she's like, no, your brother refused to, Ooh, to bend the Such an so, awkward conversation. Yeah, very very you know. awkward. Dan's like, oh, just scene. don't. just Yeah. And then he, uh, then of course he asks if he can leave. And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Go. 
wave. Get out mm, here. She didn't say I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure. No, but she should have, eh? Hey? <laughs> 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 I guess that's the point. She probably should have. <laughs> um, and then, of course... They defied me. <laughs> so, I bet them to the crisp. And then, as he's running outside, Sam, of course, runs into Bran, who is creepily sitting across the corner. Watching everybody. Watching, of course. Who and, is he waiting for? Well, he was waiting for Sam. That's the... At least he says that. Because he's like... I Sam's, don't think he was. Sam's like, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I was waiting for an old friend, which is Sam. Or something that I I took it as it? he was I took it as he was waiting for Sam to tell Sam to go tell John, is what I took it as. That's what I maybe t- t- understood it as. I don't think it was anything. Could have another meeting. Mm, let's not go too. Let's not get too heavy into deep meaning everything with Bran. Like Bran's an enigma, but uh, he's also just creepy. <laughs> uh, Bran, yeah. So Bran says, "Hey, I think it's time to spill spill the beans to John to finally tell him the the true history about his, his what family's related to." Blah 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 blah. blah. Telling his target area, basically, is what it boils down to. Um, uh, Sam then is kind of like, why me? You're his brother. Shouldn't you be the one to do it? Uh, Bran then says, no, you're the person that John uh, trusts the most, so it's better off that you do it. You're more of a brother than I am. Yeah, you're more than a... Well, Nightwatch brother, I guess, is what it's hinting at, yeah. Um, so he goes down. Or is it another secret? Oh, note? my fucking God, please don't. <laughs> Sam will tell he's actually a Targaryen. <laughs> um, so Sam heads down to the family crypt, which is where John is at. He's hanging out with his uh, Ned Stark daddy over down there, with the big old statue in there. And yeah, we get I, I, we get kind of one of the best acted scenes, I guess, of the the season, and also really great moment out of the way. Like I, I, I as much as the the season finished up with them revealing, like you know. Jon Snow's Targaryen, yep. yeah, confirmation. I was worried coming to this season that they'll push it into like episode three ish or something before they actually got around to revealing yep. it to Jon. So, or like I theorized last episode, they just wouldn't tell him. Wouldn't tell him full stop. So yeah, I was quite happy when Sam gets down there, says, "Hey, Jon, can we talk?" Jon says, "Yeah, what's up, mate? Wanna have a sit down?" And then, what up, buddy? Yeah, what up? <laughs> he says, "Hey, uh, I know he, me, and Bran worked it out." And if, well, Sam says, "I worked it out via paper. Bran worked it out by being Bran, like <laughs> doing whatever <laughs> Bran does." Creepily, I saying. wonder if anybody's explained what's happened to Bran to. No John. one understands. No one questions anything. It's just like, what's Bran do? I don't know. His eyes roll back into his head. He disappears. <laughs> he disappears for a while. He fucking. Knows he just says things. creepy stuff he at the right creepy times. Stuff, you know. He calls Hodor to die, basically. Um, so then, yeah, he, he says, you're, you know, right, uh, Leanna, Leanna's, Leanna plus, uh, what's his fuck? Uh, t- oh, oh, Rhaegar. Rhaegar, thank you. Oh, I, no, I, I didn't write it down because I'm like, it's such easy. <laughs> I should just remember. Rhaegar, Targaryen, and I remembered Leanna, though, of course. Um, you're there, baby. Ned was protecting you. Uh that's your big secret. You're actually the king. You've been the king this entire time. Uh, you own that title. You just you're actually first in line to the the the, the crown, not Danny. What the fuck are you gonna do about it? And you can tell that. I like how. I appreciate that it doesn't become this moment of John like being like, "Nah, I don't believe you," because I didn't want it to go down that. I'm like, really, please don't go down a route of just denial and not believing him. I like it. It's just kind of left on this moment of, you can tell he believes Sam because he trusts Sam, right? And he's not, qu- he's not yeah. doubting that Sam's actually telling him the truth because he knows Sam's smart and he wouldn't be t- telling this to, to fuck with him or anything. But you can tell he also doesn't know what the fuck he's supposed to do with the information once he's got it. Uh, he's kind of well, just- it doesn't help that jo- uh, he's come, Sam's coming and he's like, oh, Danny killed my family. Guess what? You're the rightful king. Yeah. Uh, kill Danny. Fuck her. Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to be on top. <laughs> You're supposed to be on top. Yeah. Um, I'd, before, like, I'd also like to point out, I think this is the, the best acted scene of the, the episode. And I think the best actor in this episode is John Bradley. Between between this scene and the one prior to this with Danny, he gets the, yeah. the golden acting He gets the most, episode. script-wise, he gets the best opportunity to act there. Yeah, fair. no, but I, I often feel like he's... But you still need to pull it off. I often feel like he's underrated somewhat on the show, I guess. When he's... Yeah. Come, like, if any of the actors, he's come quite a, a long way, I guess, on the show, out of a bunch of them. Um, the biggest character transformation, probably. Yeah. So, what what do you think is going to happen here? What what do you think John is going to do with the information? Where does he go from this? Uh, do you think he actually tells it? I... Or? Maybe... 
maybe she tries to make a move and he's like, ooh. <laughs> Goes to kiss. He's sure. like, oh, I have brushed my teeth today. Sorry, no. <laughs> I need a, need a mint. I need a mint first. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like he'll be preoccupied with other stuff. Pre- more importantly, the White Walkers. So. Yeah, I... I, I think given everything... So I don't think it's going to be dealt with immediately. No. It's going to be something that will simmer around. Simmer in the around for a while, yeah. I feel like he definitely won't rush to tell her because, of course, everything we know about John and was just talking about before, he's more interested in what's actually happening with the war and, and protecting the North and these sorts of things than he is titles. And then I also think because he has such little interest in title, I don't think he really cares about being king and I don't think he cares about sorting this stuff out with Danny. But my question then, the one that, does interview it. it is like well do we get to the next episode and, and he's like tr- being really weird with danny about like what she, like we're, we're joking but at the same time like does she like try to kiss him and he's like oh my God, no just uh, just stand over here dude like I, I definitely don't think he's gonna tell her but then i'm wondering how he's gonna tackle <laughs> that weird situation he's got in or if he's just like yolo whatever because <laughs> then of course the other thing is uh, there's this short scene I didn't uh, really bring up, but there's a short scene between uh, Tyrion, uh, Varys, Varys, and, and... Uh, fuck, what is his name? Uh, Sir, uh, what, oh, God, da- Davos. Um, they're Davos. all they're all having this talk, and it pretty much boils down to them saying, "Hey, maybe we should try and convince them to, you know, king plus queen, not just queen. You know, like a dual." Uh, dual yeah. ruling system could be better for the kingdom going force type thing so they're hinting at it so then i'm wondering like if, if one of them brings that conversation to john with him knowing the knowledge he has now would he be more likely to be like yes that does sound like a good idea because a i'm kind of owed it bitch and oh <laughs> 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 and also it seems better for the kingdom so yeah I'm, I, I could see that being like the direction they potentially go but then the bigger question on top of that is then do you think Danny would ever accept that? Am I, I would say no, I don't think she'd be down for that. I think she's come too far wanting to be queen, um, to this stage to ever agree into any sort of dual, uh, ruling, even if she really likes John, I don't see it. You know, maybe John can just be a position like a trophy husband, trophy husband, John Figure ahead. <laughs> you know, like Prince Philip. Yeah, I guess. No, yeah, I guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Uh, you know, he gets to keep going around fighting peoples and then he just runs everything. Yeah. Ruin? No, no, he's not going to ruin anything. Come on. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I, but I, I agree on your main point that I don't think that'll be handled next episode. I think it's... But then... I keep saying and then a lot, but, but every time I say something, I think of something, which is that we were saying, like, I, I didn't think they would handle the John's lineage to like episode three. You didn't think they would handle it full stop and they handle it in the first episode. So now we're like, oh, we don't think they'll handle this until X episode, X time, X, 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 whatever. Um, but they already proved this wrong. First thing once before start so. of next episode, John's barges into Daenerys's room. I'm your fucking nephew. <laughs> I'm your fucking Do- nephew. <laughs> We need to stop banging. <laughs> we need to stop banging. What a sentence. What a sentence. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe. Yeah. We'll have to... It's, it's not out of the realm of possibilities, I guess. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, yeah, I, I'll just... I guess it's just like they've subverted our expectations once. They could do it again, you know? We'll have to see. Uh, all right, so let's talk about what happens in the, the South this episode, which not a whole lot, I don't think. It's like, more so than anything else, everything that's happening in the South at King's Landing and such is set up, set up, set up, set up, set up. And that's because I don't... It's just like Cersei's not going to have a lot to do until I believe everyone that's up in the, um, the North ends up being pushed down towards her area, I guess is what's going to end up happening. Cause, yep, and then she just waits for one of them to get yeah. killed, and then she kills whatever one's still alive. Something like or that. Um, undead. Well, I'll, I'll grab your... I've got, I got a theory for how I can see the rest of the season playing out. We'll, we'll grab those before we, okay. we wrap up. But um, So Cersei hears... The, the first thing we get with Cersei is that she hears the news about the wall collapsing and, um, you know, White Walkers come through and they all this sort of stuff. And she's just sipping off, looking at the boat. She's like, great. I'm like, what do you mean great? Like, I understand in her mind, it's like, well, they're going to kill 
all of the North first. But then I'm like, you do understand, are you really that naive and you weren't listening to anything that anyone said to you? Because it's like, if they kill everyone up there, that actually the expands the the White Walker army. Yeah. Do you not understand the concept of how it works? Like, if they if they kill all of them up there, including all of the Dothraki, all of the Unsullied, all of the fucking Jon Snow's people, whatever, you, like, are you fucking dumb, bitch? <laughs> like, do you understand the concept that we're talking but about? She's got the mountain and uh, the the crossbow thing that shoots dragons. Oh, yeah. Big fucking whoopsie. She's going to be I, fine. I just, at this point, I'm like, Cersei, I already hate you, right? And I understand you're supposed to be the ultimate big bad somewhat of the, the show. It's like, it's arguable now. Like, who's really the big bad of the show? Is it the Night King or is it fucking C Cersei? But I'm like, Cersei's been around longer and I've kind of hated her longer than the Night King. So I was like, in my mind, Cersei's the, the yeah. big bad. But I'm like- Night King seems- I don't know the Night King's agenda, so I can't judge it, but- Cersei seems like a terrible person, so. Well, Night King's uh, agenda is to. Night King's like, I want to proliferate my race. This is the only way we can. Communicate. Uh, add new members to our species. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But, but it's like, Cersei, I already hate you, but I just feel like you're getting dumb right now. Now you're just annoyingly dumb. Baby brain. I've been told by separate people it's a thing. It's hardcore fucking baby brain. If you're like, oh, whoops, <laughs> I forgot that they could grow their army by a million more. Oh, you fucking idiot. All right. So that's the thing. And then she starts complaining about elephants, which is also a meme on the internet currently. Because um, it is weird how often she's like, she starts talking to the, the Golden Company. You know, they're, they're on boat. Euron brings them in. It's like, she's got a bit more of a bigger army now. Cool. They'll get turned into white, white walkers later in the series, I'm sure. They'll be fucking fantastic. Also, the main captain dude, I thought looked like Matt Smith from Doctor Who. I don't know if anyone else felt that looked like him. It looked like Matt Smith to me. Just me yeah. then. That's fine. Perfectly okay. Do you reckon they, they, they just didn't have enough room in the budget for elephants? And that's why? No, because look how good the fucking dragons look. They've got room for they've got room for elephants. I just find it weird that her that they written her, they wrote her this obsession with elephants where she's literally- This is a bit of a different elephants in the snow, that's gotta be weird. She's like standing in the corner basically like so, that, that, that one silent violin for herself, like, no elephants for me this season. Yeah, well maybe you don't know. Her favorite animal could be elephants and she's like kind of excited that this was her one opportunity to see them and before she's not dies. coming. Now she can't. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm very sorry, Siri. Yeah. Siri. Uh, Huge Dumbo fan. I did say someone, to, I think, uh, <laughs> Ruth Cornette, uh, Ruth Cornette, I can't say, I can't remember if that's the last one. Ruth Cornette, she used to work at IGN. Um, she tweeted, like, the, the crossover I didn't expect. It was like Dumbo, Dumbo with Game of Thrones. I was like, yeah. Yeah. No, who, who did? Who really did? Um, so Euron, after teasing Yara a whole bunch on the boat, like, hey, I'll kill you one day, but first I gotta fuck the queen. That's big old fun time. I'm just gonna leave you here and go try and fuck the queen. Wait, one thing, did he say that the army that he's with is mute? Yeah, it seems like the the golden company or whatever are mutes, yeah. That seems like a terrible idea for an army. It's, it seemed like a throwaway line. I don't know if it's important for later or not, but Yeah, I but for an army, that seems like a terrible idea because you just stealth and they can't yell at each other. That's something they all wrong. follow Matt Smith's looking character, I guess. That's why, of all people, Theon was able to rescue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he he heads off, speaks to Cersei, um, pretty much is like, "Hey, here, Golden Company, say hi." She's like, "Elephants, elephants, elephants, give me elephants." And he's like, "Oh, I'll tell you what, I've got an elephant of my dick." And then she's like, nah, not in. You want to see an elephant? <laughs> yeah. She's like, nah, I'm not in. And then, But then she's like, actually, I'm in. And then they fuck. And then I don't understand why, though. That, I suppose that's my my biggest question. Do you do you have any wrap around what you think her like long-term game plan here is with Euron? Because I don't. I mean, I guess it explains the baby away. You think that's what she's going to do? Like, she's just doing it? That's the only thing I can... I mean, and like just she, to placate him. They have that line after they, they, they have sex, and then she's like, I want to be alone now if they talk for a little bit. And he's really annoying character, obviously, and he's fucking talking shit. And then he's like, I'm going to put a, a baby boy in you, or something along those lines, and like, t yeah. types of... And then he's, she's like, I want to be alone now. And she leave, uh, he leaves her in, but then she like, starts to cry. 
Like, so she's just holding yeah. in, being her, like, tough persona the entire time. But, like, but if that's her game plan, I'm like, do you really want to live in a world? Like, because obviously, if that was her game plan, her end game would still be to kill Euron, but then, like, be able to explain yep. away uh, the baby's lineage. But then the baby's lineage is always going to be associated to the Ironborn. And it doesn't seem like that that's something she would actually want, you know? I don't know. It just seems like she was placating him more than anything else. She was... He seems like the person to turn at a moment's notice, so... I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't feel like she needed to, I guess, is my thing. I, I, I didn't feel like she needed to give in to him at all, but she did, so... No. Interesting. Um, she was just in the mood. <laughs> maybe. Clearly not, if you're... I don't think. Crying after, I, <laughs> I don't think it's the time for it. <laughs> All right. So while while Euron is off fucking around with Cersei though, uh, Theon. Uh. Yeah. Ha ha. Theon mounts his rescue mission, which again I was kind of surprised happened as fast as it did in the first episode because we was talking yeah. about this and way was talking about last episode we was talking about you know like I was like Theon will die like doing this rescue mission and all these sorts of things because in my mind I thought that Euron was taking her back to the Iron Island and he was going to have to rescue her. Yeah, from the I Iron think we Island. both forgot that he was going to get the Golden Company. Yeah, but then I thought he was still going to... Like, the way he talked last time we saw him, it still sounded like he wanted to retreat to the Iron Islands. But he hasn't done that. He's yeah, got- that's because he was playing the... I think it was whoever they were with when they were he left. No, it was during that big council thing. It was during the council the thing, yeah. was like... He yeah, so he was playing a role. I guess. So he didn't really want to go back. He was just going so he could go get the Golden <laughs> Company. I guess I I missed his his playing the role. I guess. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's was it's been two years. It has been two years. Yeah. Well, although I did rewatch the last episode, and I still must have missed it. So I don't know. Okay, well then that's on you. Yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, why is under doing this thing on Mount's this rescue miskin? Uh, miskin mission. Saves Yara. She headbutts him, but then helps him back up. So yep. it's like this sign, of, like fuck you, but you saved me. So respect you now, We're brother. Good. We're good. It's like, yeah, I am born. What is dead may never die, but fucking kill him anyway, which is a line later. That was pretty cool. Um, then they steal the boats, I take it, is basically what we're led to believe, I guess. They, yeah. they steal the boats that are around there and they start heading off. And Yara, of or course- Or it could have been the boats from the other men that Theon went off with. I guess. I, I didn't really- I, I yeah. didn't really understand, but at the same time, it's I'm like- not It really doesn't important. really matter, I guess, is the important thing, yeah. She's safe. They're on boats. Yeah, they're on boats. She's safe. Uh, she, of course, is like, hey, I'm going to go back. We're going to take the Iron Islands back and we're going we're gonna to save them and it'll be great. And then Theon's like, yeah, but Daenerys has gone to um, the north uh, up to Winterfell. And she's like, yeah, but if they lose the battle, they'll want to retreat to somewhere. We'll get the Iron Islands. It'll be good. Uh, they'll have someone to, re- they'll be able to come back to the Iron Islands later, blah, 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 blah. But then she can tell talking to Theon that Theon actually just wants to be there to help out his... OG family during the, the battle to come and she instead of arguing he says instead of being like no you need to stick with me where your real family blah 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 she says no go help go help yep. out your Stark brethren or whatever you want to do and, they, they and then they out. say this sort of goodbye thing in the middle of the ocean yeah and then she kicks him off and he begins swimming I don't know <laughs> <laughs> he <was> sw- <laughs> swims the shore <laughs> if, if anything he just fast travels there for the next episode I'm sure <laughs> that's actually yep, what's going to he just catches a raven I'm, it's like the, the timeline again it's like he's all the way down here and then if he turns up next episode but then we know the Night King's here oh, I, don't, I swear I have to just not even think about it this season or else I'll just do my fucking head in at this point um, yep. and then the only other like key important scene that's chucked away in all this is uh, Bronn is given a job to kill Jamie and T- uh, Tyrion if he sees them basically Oof. Is what it boils down to. Like it's 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 a lot longer scene with little jokes and sex and whatever else is going on. But it's like, hey, here's a crossbow. Yep. Is that what you call him? Cross cross. Yep. Bolt. Cross, crossbow. Crossbow bolt thing. I don't know. Whatever whatever he used to kill Tywin Lannister. Whatever Tyrion used to kill Tywin Lannister is given it by uh Q, Q, what's his name Q Q Q bolt Q Q I uh, can't Kyrian. I don't know the maester the creepy guy. The creepy maester guy says gives it to him and says, hey, if you see the betrayer brothers. Kill him. And you get a fuck ton of gold. There's already a bunch of gold outside for you. No. Yeah, he's getting paid up front. So why would you do it? Especially if you don't know. You just wait till... You just wait to see who's on the winning side. You get more, I guess. That's what Bron's going to do. But... It's like... Well, here's my question. I'll add this one to the prediction sheet. Well, maybe not, but either way. Will 
Bron, if given the chance, kill either of them, Jamie or Tyrion. Nah. Yeah, that's a big on nah for me too. No. I could see him lining Bron's it up. Good. He's yep. Then nah. That's it. No. Nah. Yep. He's a good man. And we get another scene later in the episode, back up towards the north, where we've got T- Tormund, Beric, and a few others from escaping the wall, and it's collapsed, of course. Uh, they're creeping through a ca- castle, I'd, I'd, or some sort of place, I guess. Uh, I didn't know if we were supposed to know where it was at first. I gathered we wasn't. We're not really supposed to know where it is until they find the Lord Kid touch the wall, I guess, yeah. um, I, uh, later. But they're creeping through it. They bump into some other Night's Watch uh, crew who's happens to be creeping through it as well there's a bunch of dead bodies all around the place as they're creeping through so they know s- some shit's going on there um no there wasn't dead bodies was the thing well there's blood but no dead bodies yeah. there's just blood yeah, yeah. no dead bodies so it's like blood people were killed but then they're back to life as white walkers and they've joined the army so yep the, the, the night king is building his army as he's going along which is nice that's good that's good for him i'm sure you know like it always helps to pick up a few expansion m- few extra members on your way to conquer and kill John Snow, who you hate so much. Um, when they bump into the other people, there was one funny moment here that was actually a good joke, I thought, which was when yeah. uh, Tormund bumps into the other dude. I forgot to write down the character's name. Like one of Dolores the Ed. What's his name? Dolores. Dolores. One of the OG Jon Snow Night's Watch people. The- yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is. Um, he bumps into him and he's like, he's got blue eyes. And then Tormund's like, I've always had blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite funny I thought I, I pay that joke. and yeah. that's what I mean like that is typical like Game of Thrones level that's humor, the kind of humor you're used to the, not not the before the way it was cut and everything seemed like that's not the kind of Game of Thrones humor I'm used to at all no 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 but this is this is the, the type of Game of Thrones joke um, so they go up into the main whole room I guess of this building or whatever it is and we do get to see this uh, young boy who's like staked with a dagger or something I guess to the uh, to the wall at the back, and he's surrounded in all these body parts. Now, the the boy is the boy we saw from the start of the episode. Yeah. Um, so at the start of the episode, there's a little boy who makes Liana, uh, Liana, what's her name, look like a veteran. Tight. She's like six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this kid looks like he's super young. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and then he's the lord. Yeah. San- of, Sansa's, uh, House Sansa's like Lord, whatever your name is, where are your people? Lord Umber. Yeah. That's yeah. That's, this, and then that's a little this kid poked kid. out. Yeah. Um. Yep. So he's nailed to the wall here. Whatever. Stake. Creepy. Daggered. Sorted. Um. And he's surrounded by all these these body parts forming a symbol. Uh. The symbol. I don't think we really have a name or whatever like a, a description of what this symbol. Never is. seen it before. It's well, we have. Kinda. It's it's been like th- there's a scene in one of the episodes where there's a bunch of body parts north of the wall, uh, a bunch of bodies that have formed this sort of symbol, and then. Uh, there's a couple of places we've seen it drawn, like in uh, in like flashbacks and stuff. It, it's basically been hinted at that it's like the symbol of the first man or like the first people or whatever, which is what uh, the Night King is. You know what I mean? The, the like the first man, first people, whatever they call them. Um, I saw someone post on Twitter this image of uh, the top down shot of the scene where we see. Uh, him turned into the Night King, you know, where the, the forest people stab him and all that sort of stuff. And it, they were saying that kind of looks like that, which it, it does. Like the, the top parts, this, this orange tree, and then there's some stones placed around it and all these sort of things. But there's, there's not like an official description or anything of what exactly this symbol is. It's a lot of theorizing, but we have seen, we have seen body parts or, or, or like things laid out to represent this symbol somewhat before, but we'd, we've we've never yeah. had it explained, so we don't really know what it means. But whatever it is, we're kind of presuming it's apparently it's called the Death Swirl. Well, there you go, the Death Swirl. That that will do. I I, I I was just taking it as the Night King's insignia. You know, that's his house, I guess. <laughs> his house Death Death Swirl or whatever. Um, yeah. Of course, the, the the Lord comes back to life. Not really a scary moment, though. The, I don't know if that was trying to make it a jump scare moment, but it, it didn't do it. Beric burns him, and then the whole body parts burn, and then they're all like, oh, shit. If the fucking Night's King's been through here, it means that we're behind him and his army, and we have to somehow get around and ahead of him to get to Jon Snow to, to warn him what's happening and how the fuck are we going to do that? Because that's, you know... 
that's a whole hard hard trip to do. So they're, they're stuck between a, a rock and a hard place, really. And then the last scene of the episode that kind of sets up where we could be going into episode two, um, it, it, it does set up where we're going, is we see this hooded figure come into uh, Winterfell and it's revealed to be Jamie. And then there's a creepy shot again of Bran just staring at him. But this time it's kind of creepy and it makes sense because it is like but, yeah. he's staring at him going, You put me in this You're chair. You're the motherfucker who, <laughs> yeah. Push me, push out, me out, of a, out of that tower and caused me to lose my uh, ability to walk. Thanks. So fuck you. So that's the only time I'm like, Bran, you stare him down. You stare him. You stare, you stare at that you man. You stare him down real good. You, you, do you stare it. as much as you want. You stare as much as you need to, young man. Um, so I guess that the first question I have for going into next week's episode is what mm. do you think is going to happen with Jamie? Because did you watch the, the next week? Did you watch the trailer? Yeah. So I did. They, they have him in the trailer. We see he's brought into a room. Uh, Daenerys is saying like, oh yeah, as a, as a kid, my brother would always talk tales about the man who killed our father and what we'll do if we saw him. Um, and of course the, the room is full of people who have had issues and still have issues with, Jamie, there's going to be a lot of people there. Do you think he's just? But he's got some supporters in that room. Uh, yeah, that's true. There, there will be some Two. supporters of people there. It's more than none, which is better than some people get. I suppose. Yeah. Um, what do you more think? More than Littlefinger. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that that's true. Um, what do you think is going to happen with Jamie? Do you reckon it's just going to be a like back forth, back forth, and these uh, please yeah. his case? I think he maybe he pleads his case, and then the you not know, watch it the the. The White Walkers attack, so I don't have time. Like to... interrupt it straight away, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like do do a horn goes off or something. Yeah, like, it's like too late. No. Give him a sword. Let him help out. What else are we gonna do? Yeah, there's no point arguing about it. I mean, if it's we'll not... solve this later. Yeah, if if it's yeah. not that, I just see it being like another John Stone moment of, look, I understand I don't love him either, but at the moment, if he says he's here to help, and like if he's actually Ooh, here what if help. john like overrules daenerys is like Ooh, we'll pardon him yeah, some bunch yeah, of fight know. and gonna happen for good yeah, yeah. I, I i don't see i don't see it being a big part of the episode to be honest because it's like do, do we really no. need 20 minutes of political should everyone trust jamie or not when the fucking knights king's on his way and the other part we do see in the trailer of course is that um they do the the team of beric and um uh, fuck tormund managed to get ahead of managed to get ahead of the Night's King somewhat, warn John, and then John in the trailer does say, well, how long we got? And he says, till, till morning time. Dawn. So what what do you see playing out? We're, we're not, obviously next week's episode isn't a super long one. It's the same, roughly the same length of time. Yep. Um, episode two. That shot is going to be how we end the episode. Do you actually reckon that's how it's going to, do you reckon that's how it's going to end? I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I mean, I, I, could, I could see it. It wouldn't be... Ridiculous. It'd be everybody like prepping and like then, because it's episode three when it starts to jump. Or? Yeah, they start getting a little bit heavier on the the runtime from episode three onwards. Yeah, the last couple yeah. of the hour twenty one. So, what? Well, well, let's do this then. So we're kind of look looking towards wrapping up this this episode. Um, now that we've watched the first episode, now that you've kind of got a lot more information about the season and stuff. How do you see the remainder of the episodes playing out? What happens in each one? How's it going to go down? Roughly. I honestly don't know. And do you like that? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who, who doesn't want to be surprised and shocked? I mean, yeah. as long as it's good, I don't really care. But Any lasting thoughts before wrapping up, I guess, then? No, just give us more, please. Well, you will. You only have is to it, wait a is week. Is it Monday yet? <laughs> <laughs> it isn't. Is it, it's not. I'm sorry. Next week. Oh. But they're coming. They're coming. Game of Thrones is on the final stretch, of course. Thank you for joining us this week for South of King's Landing. You can watch the video version of this show to see our lovely faces, of course, over at youtube.com slash explosion network, where you should subscribe to the channel, like the video, and ring the ding ding a ding bell to so make sure the White Walkers don't get you. And also get notifications when the next episode goes up. Or if you'd rather just listen to this program, you can find it available on all podcasting services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. All you got to do is search for South of King's Landing, and it should show up as long as you've spelt it all correctly. 
You can follow me on Twitter at VivaLadel, V-I-V-A-L-A-D-A-L. You can follow Ash on Twitter at Ashley Hobby, A-S-H-L-E-Y, H-O-B-L-E-Y. This is, of course, and a product of the Explosion Network, of which you can find many more great shows, news, reviews, articles, and sexy things, including our movie and TV podcast, What Do You Want to Watch? And you follow Explosion Network on Twitter at Explosion Pod. Thank you for watching this episode or listening to this episode. Until next week, the North remembers... Bye-bye.